Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Saviour divine. Now hear us while we pray. Take all of our guilt away, or let us from this day be holy dying. Let us pray. God of all good life, on our journey toward Easter, cleanse our hearts of every desire to mimic the violence of the wrongs that befall us. Save us from becoming the evil we despise. Save us from denial of abuses which daily crucify Christ afresh. Drive away from us the chilling cold 
of numbing detachment from others' pain, and that detachment also from our own hurts. Breathe, or oh breathe, your empowering spirit into the troubled hearts of your children who wish they could, wish to love but cannot. Creator of our bodies, Father of our spirits, how we yearn to see you and our friend Jesus face to face. Precious to us are the Christ-like influences and the whispered encouragement to keep on keeping on. What a morning it will be, O oh God, when we mingle our voices with theirs, those that we have lost a while, and with all the souls, invisible and adoring angels in a mighty choir of unending wonder, O oh my Lord, what a morning when you shall crown us with the crowns you are holding now above our heads, chastise, charm, and comfort us, O oh God until we have grown tall enough to wear them. Hear our prayer in the name of Jesus, the shining way, the truth, and the life. Amen.
Good evening, brothers and sisters. How wonderful it is to join with you once again for another daily devotion. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus say the Lord. For me, hymns and songs are so important to devotion and our quiet time with our God. So often when we are facing challenging circumstances, there are instances when our words do not seem as though they can truly convey our feelings. It is often that many of us find ourselves singing hymns and songs that are reflective of what we then wish to express. Hymn 415 in the Voices in Praise, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, is one that comes to mind when I reflect in this season of Lent. When we truly consider all that Jesus endured, we know that his journey was neither easy nor pleasant, but he understood his purpose and most importantly, he understood the power of his Father. In the Synoptic Gospels, we read of Jesus' journey to the cross, his teachings, preaching and healing that all preceded his eventual death at the hands of sinful men. When we truly consider the magnitude of what Jesus endured and what he was sent to do, we can appreciate that although Jesus was often surrounded by crowds and accompanied by his disciples on this journey, that this journey was somewhat one of isolation. A word which many of us have become all too familiar with during this season of pandemic. It must have been isolating in the sense that there was no human being in which God could confide. There was no human being who was able to fully understand the magnitude of the circumstance and the significance of his life and the importance of his death. Recall in John 14, when Jesus was speaking to his disciples about leaving to prepare a place for them and how Thomas and Philip responded. Although they had journeyed with Jesus for quite some time, they still lacked full understanding of who he was and his mission. On this occasion, Philip says to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus responded to him, saying, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Although even the most difficult things that we will face in this life can certainly never be compared to this journey that, journey that Jesus took, we can understand the feeling of isolation that comes even when we are surrounded by friends and family. People who are depressed, depending on the level of their depression, can be at times highly functioning putting on a mask daily and going about their business, but yet at the same time feeling very isolated. Have you ever had this experience? I say to us that even though we may at times experience isolation as Jesus did or may have, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus save the Lord. Although our Savior may have felt isolated as he came closer to fulfilling his purpose, it was that complete trust in his Father that sustained him. He took rest in the promise that his Father had made. He took his Father at his word. Are we as followers of Christ taking him at his word? Are we resting upon his promises? For I believe that if we follow Jesus' example of trust in the promises God has shared with us in the written word, that even those most daunting and isolating of situations will become more bearable as we trust the one who saves. The lyrics of verse 3 read, Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. As Christians, there are many seasons in which we will certainly feel misunderstood, and certainly Jesus' journey mirrors these types of seasons. 
His journey was one that led to many instances of ridicule, from Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven is seen in Matthew 21. To a change of events and the mocking words, Hail, King of the Jews, which were said in Matthew 27 as they spat on him and struck him with a reed on his head, and the words crucify him as seen in that very same chapter. They tried their best to humiliate him. As Christians, what we stand for at times will cause others to ridicule us, but we must reflect on the example Jesus displayed for us. Despite the mocking and the taunting, he held fast to the will of his Father. From self he ceased, so that the will of God would be fulfilled, and that we his children, the sheep of his pastures, would have access to the gift of salvation. Jesus was able to take from his Father, as this hymn encourages us to take from Jesus, life and rest and joy and peace. I believe that is why he went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. We can reflect on those well-known words which the scripture says he uttered in his second prayer. My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Brothers and sisters, as we walk closer with the Lord, there are times when what we desire will have to take a back seat to the will of God. Jesus did not go to his Father in prayer to seek a way out. He went, as we often do, when we are confronted by challenges, to commune with God and to rest in him and acquire his peace. I believe that those moments of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane fortified our Savior. He received from the Father the peace that allowed him to carry on. The power of prayer, my family in Christ, may we never underestimate the power of prayer and how it can change our perspective. It is often the moment of prayer in which God's strength is made absolutely perfect in our weaknesses. The fourth and final verse of the hymn goes on to say, I am so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. As we journey through life, may we stand on our faith, using God's track record with us as a reassurance that he can and will never fail. That even though we may endure deception as Jesus did in the case of Judas Iscariot, that although we may experience some unpleasant things, that our Father journeys with us, never leaving or forsaking us. We must learn to trust Him, for He is our Savior and our friend. Regardless of our current circumstances, we are not alone, as Jesus was not alone as He journeyed to the cross. Even though we may go through seasons where we feel isolated and defeated by circumstances, which seem too great to bear, the one we serve will uphold us with his righteous right hand. He will be our refuge and our strength, our very present help in times of trouble, who will be with us all until the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, May we receive, my brothers and sisters, the grace to trust him more. God bless you. Amen.
May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. And now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way unto you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, even as I do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Go in peace and may the God of peace go with you. Amen. of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.